Hey, what's happening, everybody? It's Aaron. I figured I'd do a little uh, advanced generators tutorial today and a little bit of a channel update. I haven't had a lot of time lately between work and physical therapy. And when I'm not at work or physical therapy, I've been exhausted. So I'm not going to probably release any videos in the upcoming week. I've got one week of physical therapy and then I should be good to go. So give me a week and I'll get back to it. For now, let's talk about advanced generators. It's a mod by, I don't know if it's Bidu or Black Do. I feel like I saw Black Do somewhere, but uh, the website is bidu.net. And this is a free form multi block generator thing. There, there's actually a lot to the mod. Uh, there's not a lot in NEI, but you can configure these things very differently. So the first one we'll talk about, it's just a regular gas generator, I guess. Uh, you need the controller. The output module is how you get the RF out of the generator. You need the turbine, which actually makes the power. You need a fluid intake valve, which is where your fuel goes. You don't necessarily need capacitors and you don't necessarily need fuel tanks. The capacitor just adds a little bit of storage. As you can see from the signs, you can put 10, 10 capacitors. So we've got, what's that? 5 million RF. If we knock it off, well, now we only have a hundred thousand. If we put one back, or put two back. There we go. Same thing with the fuel tank. We've only got one bucket right now. As soon as I put a couple more tanks, it immediately fills up. They hold 16 buckets a piece. You can have five fluid intake valves up to 50 turbines, which I have set up. We'll take a look at that in just a minute and six output modules, but these things will output as much as you want. The only reason you really need more than one is if you're running a lot of cables and you know, you're limited by your sides. So, you know, I've only got four sides available from this one. Well, if I put one right here, you know, I've got five more to use. So this thing is pretty rad. The next one we're going to talk about, well, I, I should probably tell you about the fuels. You can use Buildcraft fuel. You cannot use Buildcraft oil. You can use Sin gas, which is from this mod. That's what we're making over here. You can use forestry, ethanol, mine factory reloaded biofuel, rocket fuel from Ender IO, fire water from Ender IO, and liquefacted coal from thermal expansion. The turbines generate the same amount of RF regardless of what fuel you use, but you do get more power overall from certain fuels. I think that uh, Billcraft fuel gives you the most. I think it's, I don't know, 1500 RF a millibucket or something like that. There's some math to it. If you look it up, there's supposed to be a tool tip in NEI. If you hold shift, but I don't know if that works. Either way, moving right along, we'll go to the Syngas producer setup, which consists of the Syngas producer controller. We have a heating chamber, a mixing chamber, fluid intake, item in input or intake, and then fluid output, which is the sin gas. So there is an ideal setup for this. I don't remember what it is. I want to say it's like at least five mixing chambers for every heating chamber. And this is just like the other one. It's free form. You can see you can put up to 25 of the mixing chambers and up to 10 of the heating chambers. So if we just stack a few up right here, 
the interface of this, I'm just pumping in blocks of coal. It's making five millibuckets a tick. If we knock it out, it goes back down to one. So it makes about a millibucket per mixing chamber. And I should have gone over the output configuration of the other one, but it just shows you, you know, what's connected really. We're not concerned with input. These are just output configuration. But this takes steam and carbon. I believe you can put any solid fuel in here. I don't have Railcraft, so I couldn't try coal coke, but I'm pretty sure logs will work. I always type the wrong thing for those. If we put some of those in, they get burned up immediately. Obviously, they don't last as long as a block of coal. But So you can use any solid fuel. So water in, solid fuel in, send gas out. Now we come to the steam setup, which is the steam turbine controller, a turbine. You can have 25 of them. They make 80 RF a piece per tick. You got your flux generator, which I have output module on the sign. There are also... Uh, IC2 ones, LV, MV, and HV emitter. So if we put one of these right here and grab a, a rotary macerator and maybe some cobblestone, I might have to use some sort of cable. <laughs> I actually... Um, I didn't try this before. It was kind of an afterthought because there we go. I don't really use other sorts of power generation for IC2. But as you can see, we've got some IC2 or one IC2 machine hooked up. Luckily, these things don't explode. We'd be in trouble if they did. So you've got all three levels of industrial craft power. But how this works, you pump in steam and you get out power. And as I said earlier, I do not have Railcraft, so I'm using the MFR steam boiler, which takes lava buckets and a creative water source. Uh, this will actually, like most MFR machines, maybe all MFR machines, It'll automatically output to an adjacent inventory, such as the fluid intake valve right here. So this thing is full of steam. It's getting steam. I don't think I put a capacitor on it. I did. It's just outputting all the energy. If we get rid of that thing, it should start to fill up. Yeah, there it goes. Same kind of deal. Uh, if we hook up the macerator again and look at the output, it'll tell you what you're outputting for each of the power outputs. Uh, but this one's fairly straightforward. Kind of like the generator, the gas generator, but it just uses steam. Power is comparable because the turbine is what makes the power. And they only make 80 RF a piece, right? This one might make a little more. What's it make? This one's 100. So you're, you're, you're losing a little there. Plus you have to generate your own steam. If we look at the recipes for these things, it's mostly redstone and iron. It's, um, it, it's got some special things for itself. But it's when I did it in a stream one day, it's mostly redstone and iron one nether quartz for that one so not really that bad you could get a, a very basic setup for i don't know pretty cheap i think it was about maybe a stack or a little over a stack of iron to make the basic components for one of these the really good thing is if there's no room in the buffer and no power requested, they won't do anything. So you really don't have to worry about that. 
So this is the biggest one you can make with the most components. I've got 10 fuel tanks, 10 capacitors, 50 turbines, five fluid inputs, just because that doesn't really matter. And one controller. And I went ahead and put six outputs, but we're only gonna need five. And as you can see, this holds 50 million RF. Not bad if I say so myself. Obviously, if you were gonna build this, I mean, you could build it flat, it would be no problem, right? But this will output as much as your cable will carry. The leadstone, see, that's 200 RF. I didn't realize the leadstone carried that much. If we put one on the next one, we got 800 through that one, et cetera, et cetera. So you can see exactly what's going out of each connection. This one should be 32. Yep. And our buffer is draining rather quickly. And if we go to the final one, 32,400. I don't know the speed of this. See? Let's put another one on top and then look 64,000. So basically it's limited by your cable, not the output of the machine. So we just drained that whole five or fifth. This one's 50 million buffer in less than a minute. So it works. It works pretty well. Uh, it's pretty cheap. It doesn't require a lot of special stuff. And I really like it. Uh, once we get back to making videos, we're definitely going to see one of these in my world. So that's going to do it. There's another thing called the heat exchanger. I'm not going to go over because it just transfers heat to things which could be useful for IC2 but I'm more concerned with power generation. So as I said at the beginning, I'm going to be out of pocket for about the next week. So don't expect anything for the next four or five, six days. And um, I'll get back to it as soon as I am able. So thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time.